you know, and I've seen a fair few kind of big, whopping, breaking news stories in my time, and, and I'm you know, very wedded to 24-hour rolling news. Um, but then about sort of six years ago, crossed the newsroom floor to sort of travel to the dark side, or actually the bright side, really, the digital side. Um, and again, I, when, when I moved over there, I was very much a, um, you know, kind of, a, I suppose, a digital virgin, so to speak. Um, not, not, you know, and... Um, but 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 for me, I kind of get that uh, it really all, all it is is another it's an output tool basically. So Julian March, the output producer, really kind of kicked in. Um, but the really big challenge there is is around um, news from transformation. And you probably heard that word or those phrases banded around quite a lot. Uh, every newsroom is going through it. It's basically how do you adapt your model from a um, you know a kind of traditional media model, which may or may not be twenty four hour news so in the case of sky it is but you know in the case of a newspaper or itv news it isn't um into one where you absolutely have to be uh you know dealing with bro ro rolling news and 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 so therefore um you know that takes a real that sort of takes a really big shift in, in in kind of mindset for a lot of people uh, to get their heads around um and change is one of those things uh, i suppose uh, not necessarily from the point of view of journalism, but from a point of view of leadership and management is one of those things which you have to sort of take people through because some people are more comfortable with change than others. Some people are shit scared by change. Uh, I eat change for breakfast, I love it. Not, not uh, coins, but, but, uh, but I love change, you know. So that's cool with me. Um, uh, and, and actually, uh, so coming to ITV is a fantastic opportunity because um, we have a, a you know a, a, we have a, a start a product right now on itv.com slash news which um, uh, should we say can be improved rather substantially um, I'll put a watch what I say because we'll tweet it um, uh, which 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 actually means that we can behave like a startup which is really exciting so we don't have a great big incumbent legacy pros uh, proposition that we have to really care about and worry about losing a massive audience for uh, you know, when, when we innovate etc um, and uh, so, so that's 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 quite exciting. Um, but I can also come to this the, the, the ITV as the organisation, you know, with uh, you know, uh, with with this great opportunity to create the rolling news service for ITV. I did actually briefly also work on ITV News's uh, twenty four hour channel, ill fated as it was, um, before my elastic snapped back to Sky News Towers. Um, uh, but I, I believe it's to our great advantage that we don't have a 24-hour channel on the telly because it's a huge drain of resources. It's like a runaway train. Um, it needs feeding with coal consistently, and uh, when the, and, the, and then it needs feeding with even more coal when a great big story happens. And it's just a you know it's quite difficult to get people who are focused around delivering that and not allowing that to go to black to um, to concentrate on on delivering in digital as well. So so actually that's an opportunity. Um, so I believe that what we're creating for March should be uh, our rolling news channel um, in digital media, and it is all about um, telling the story in real time. After all, you know, in this in this medium uh, or, or set of media, um, it is all about telling the story in real time. The the notion of an arbitrary of, of a deadline, whether that be a TX time or an embargo, or you know, is actually is is there to be challenged. Um, I believe. Um, so that's it, really. That's all I'm going to say right now. Um, no, I think it's worth, you know, it's, it, we should, as journalists, question what is, a, what is an embargo for. An embargo effectively is a thing withholding disclosure, you know. Um, so in the true raw spirit of journalism, that's uh, anathema, isn't it? You know, we're about uh, publication, we're about, um, you know, um, openness. Uh, however, there are many situations where an embargo is extremely important, you know. So um, not least... You know, I think science journalism is a great example. So, for example, Nature magazine do their great big study on fruit flies. You know, that is their that is a you know for quite a few people at Nature magazine that's a whopping great piece of work. You know, um, for you know Sky News or ITV just to sort of you know um, to look at it and and you know in the, on the planning desk and put it straight in the bin is an insult to all those uh, you know those brains who have worked so hard on it. Um, and and we should, you know and, and and I suppose in that situation the embargo is there because it's all around the publication of you know the nature uh, you know the nature paper or whatever or the publication you know so the lancet is there's another great example uh, and to run rushrod over that kind of stuff um, will destroy if you like your relationship uh, with those sources for getting those those bits of work because you know a lot of that kind of stuff via you know um, 
uh, you know, uh, new new research is, you know often comes from those sort of those sources. Uh, they give it to you on the basis that you know, please just respect the fact that we've got a publication which needs to you know hit a hit the whatever the new stands or whatever they are or the stands and the the library thesis sort of shelves or whatever. Uh, and to ignore that is, is is sort of an insult to them. There's also obviously public. There's also kind of national security. Um, issues, you know, so there was a big furore about Harry in Afghanistan, uh, etc. Um, you know, um, there's the, there's there's also the D notice uh, system um, set up with uh, you know the Home Office, where broadcasters are basically um, you know uh, informed um, you know what it sits under a D notice, i.e., what they can and cannot say about things on because it's a matter of national security. Um, and I think you know, in those days, in, the, in that world, I think we have to, you know, you have to sort of respect that because you know, otherwise we put more people's lives at risk than we actually, uh, you know, we do more harm than good. Do you see what I mean? So, uh, yeah, that, that's that's the way it is. However, one of my great um, uh, kind of bosses in, in in the past at Sky famously said, "You can't embargo cancer." Uh, you know, so the fact is that you know what he means by that is that you know there are millions of people around the world for whom cancer is is killing is killing them and easing up their lives. So the notion of kind of delaying a publication into a study around cancer may or may not be, you know, wasting people's lives. Do you see what I mean? You know. That's a fantastic question. Um, we, so, so obviously, yeah, the, the, you're right. It's a very clear kind of uh, difference between Sky and ITV. So, so, you know, Sky don't get this, the, you know, the, 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 the license fee money. Uh, ITV is a public service broadcaster. How, you know the terms of its license um, are around providing free, you know, providing a certain amount of news programming, free to air, etc. Um, so that's just you know that's the way we are, kind of thing. Um, so therefore, who are we out to get? Um, well, I think first of all we need to celebrate the fact that we're not in North Korea and journalism is a you know a plurocracy. That's the word, but uh, you know we should uh, we should celebrate the plurality of journalism. Journalism is about you know uh, lots of voices, um, uh, so that's good, and uh, it's important that we are there. Um, uh, the interesting thing about ITV News is that you know it's won um, the BAFTA for best news program three years in a row or something, you know. Um, uh, and so, you know, and, it, and it's, it, it's it, 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 what it does, it does fantastically well. And it's got some big stars there. You know, Laura Koonsberg is a good example of someone who's just, you know, uh, moved, uh, moved over. Uh, and you've probably done lots of stuff around her Twitter handle and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, uh, and, and ITV is a mass market, you know, a really mass market kind of media uh, kind of entity. Uh, but the ITV core audience, um, you know, is you know the sort of the people who are watching Towie and X Factor and all that kind of lot are, aren't necessarily your you know big hardcore consumers of news and they're equally not necessarily you know the hardcore consumers of news are ABC ones so, you know a, um, a higher sort of demographic they're more valuable to advertisers um, you know it's all very well bleating on about uh, you know uh, cluttering a brand up with advertising or whatever um, but but you know somehow and you know, I'm sure you guys as journalists know some somebody's got to pay for this stuff and it's got to be paid for somehow you know so advertising is how we pay you know how we help pay for this stuff and news is expensive it's very expensive um, so but yet it, it, there's a real challenge which is to sort of you know make make give ourselves a sustainable model which is Pretty, which is sort of sustainable, uh, at versus polluting the brand with lots and lots of kind of frankly crappy advertising. You know, you know what I mean. So, um, not necessarily because because I think also we have to the the, the challenge we've got with ITV News, and this is a very very germane uh, question as well. So so you know um, this is right from the soul. Um, uh, you know, ITV News is a very broad thing. It does lots of things. It does daybreak in the morning to the news at ten in the evening on national, and then it does nine regional news services. And the regional news services have a completely different voice to uh, or sort of tone to to the national services. And, and actually, people are far feel far more connected to the regional services um, because you know the people who read that news, you might see them in the supermarket. You know, the, the, you know, there's, there's sort of they, they, they can feel sort of, and, and it celebrates their region. It's less about big breaking stories uh, necessarily. 
So we've got to kind of straddle all of those things and we've got to and we've got to do that with a brand. This is the really big challenge with a brand which can kind of happily, you know, embrace all of that. It's got to be very inclusive. And I think inclusive is quite a big word here because you know, we have to be inclusive in our journalism and who we're trying to kind of reach to, but also in digital media as well as on, on, on the television, you know, the nature of digital media nowadays is inclusive as well in that, you know, we are able to uh, involve our audience in our storytelling. We need our audience just as much as they need us kind of thing, you know. Um, so that, so in, that, you know, in that respect, it is very inclusive. But equally, you know, should we... There are two different arguments. There's the sort of, you know, there's the multi-platform engagement argument whereby if you give people more opportunity to love you, i.e. provide them a TV service and a digital service they love, uh, they'll love you more, which is fantastic. They'll click more, you know, uh, web and watch more telly um, than someone who just watches the TV or just watches the web. Um, you know, which is the kind of, you know, the, the kind of the, the received wisdom on multi-platform engagement versus, well, actually, why don't you, you know, on a different platform, go for a different audience? Um, you know, and taking the example of regional news, the core, uh, any guess what the core, you know, kind of demographic of the regional news audience might be, age group wise? They want to have a stab in the dark? Hey, again, 90, 95 onwards, yeah, near, near. 35, yeah, no, higher, yeah, I mean, it's like 55, 65 onwards, yeah, I mean, it's old, getting older. You know, soon they're going to shuffle off this mortal coil. coil. No, there isn't going to be it. You know, and this, you know, we've got to think about that kind of stuff. Um, so we've got to attract a new audience um, and a younger, more digitally savvy audience uh, who get their news in different ways. You know, how many of you guys watch the regional news at six a.m. six p.m. every night on the telly? Not very many. One. Okay, fantastic. Um, you know. Um, so, 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 you know, th th that's, that's the sort of the difference between those two arguments. We can either go for the same lot or actually try and broaden ourselves. Do you see what I mean? And I think we've got a real opportunity to do that. Uh, and, and I think what we're doing, and Paul, you know, without tantalising you too much, I'd love to show you stuff. But um, you know, digital, you know, the, the democracy of digital media is such that if, if I do, then suddenly you're going to be front page news. Um, um, is that you know? Is that what we're doing is actually quite innovative. Uh, it's it's based around the real time delivery uh, in a kind of a timeline kind of form. So you know, not you know, Facebook users and Twitter users aren't you know strangers to that kind of stuff. You know, uh, they understand that kind of delivery, but to do it in news is possibly you know just making a kind of a link which necessarily hasn't quite been made yet, um, particularly around the whole proposition. Uh, and and then so therefore, what what we do digitally. Uh, has to be has to make a quite an important statement about who we are at ITV and at ITV we have to be <coughs> inclusive but we've also got to be relevant as well and modern you know and the problem is that you know uh, thankfully it's changing but you know you could walk into ITV when I walked into ITV out of Sky it felt a little bit like walking into a time warp because you know they're focused on terrestrial news bulletins I've got to get people to jump into real time digital media skipping 24 hour news channels do you see what I mean you know and so they're still talking about holding stuff back for 6 o'clock and I'm just what are you doing what are you doing? You can't do this, you know. Um, you know plus, we're on Internet Explorer 6, which is obviously it's all changing. But um, uh, so, you know, um, so we've got, to, we've got to kind of, you know, we can't just launch a Me Too service which looks like the Beeble CNN, not least because, uh, you know, um, we can't catch up on 13 years of innovation, you know, in that, in that, uh, from, from their camps, if you like, in such a short time. Um, but, you know, if we can't, we're not going to make an impact as a, as, a, as a Me Too service. We have to do something sort of tactical which, which, which carves us out as different uh, and provide an alternative. Um, and I think, you know, that's, uh, and, 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 and it's, you know, and I think, you know, what we've got, we'll have to see in March whether that, that is the case. But, you know, fingers crossed. Yeah, so, God, you guys ask great questions. This is fantastic. Um, you're absolutely right, uh, I, and you know, and the 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 answer is it, it's a balance. You know, absolutely, we've got to break news, uh, and 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 you know, in many respects, the the you know the story by its very nature of it being a sort of an unfolding thing will evolve. You know, and what we think, you know, we can we can, you know, what we think was right might actually turn out to be wrong. But at least we've tried to tell you the, the, the latest. Now I suppose that's what they'd say at Sky as well. Um, but you're absolutely right. It's all very well, you know, um, chucking loads of stuff out there. And actually, to be fair, you know, um, if you go into digital media right now, there's just so much stuff out there anyway, you know. Uh, we've got a million times more sources than we had, you know, 20 years ago or whatever. Um, uh, you still, we, you know, it's our job as journalists to make that make sense of it all. And, and you know, and it was really interesting listening to what Paul was saying about... Um, 
you know, about about verification and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, that is all. That is just basic rules of journalism. It doesn't matter what source you apply that to, or what delivery or platform you apply that to. That's just basic kind of stuff, you know. Um, and and you know, and I think the message from from me is that you know, basic rules of journalism apply. It doesn't matter what we're talking about, whether we're talking about TV, radio, web, whatever, you know, Twitter, you know, anything. Um, and uh, we have to strike that balance between, you know, which is partly around the sort of curation bit about making sure that we tell people the relevant stuff in a timely manner. But don't bombard them. You know, we're not doing our job properly. We say, you know what, you decide. Forget it. You know, uh, we're just you know, don't shoot the messenger. You know what I mean? That's not really what we're necessarily here for. You know, that's not what you guys are doing your job, your your, your courses for either. You, you know what I mean? What we do, what we can do, I think, is we can provide a blend of real time reportage in terms of updates, but also doing a job um, uh, of saying, okay, right, well, this is what we know so far. Let's try and make sense of it. You see what I mean? So. To give you a kind of TV analogy, it's like saying, you know, here's the rolling news channel, never wrong for long type idea, but you know, quotes its sources, corrects itself, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but but here's also the service with uh, record bulletin VTs, which are thought out, curated, right throughs, you know, um, pulling together what we know so far, making sense of it, and and kind of helping new readers start there. Do you, do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah, that's sort of balance. Yeah, it is. I, I, but I, I don't. I don't blame journalists for that at all. What, you know, come on, I've walked in here. I'm not going to suddenly blame journalists for that. No, I, my, in the context of the Eurozone crisis, it's you know the people who aren't saying anything concrete are the guys arguing it out in in those pointless summits. You know, um, uh, and and this happened sort of two or three years ago when you know with when the first recession bit. Um, and you know everybody in the city and my mates, you know, who, you know, who are in the city, you know, berate me at dinner parties, saying, you know, it's all your fault. You're talking the market down. You know, um, it doesn't take a genius to look at what the FTSE is doing and, and all that kind of stuff. I, I, I think we'd be really rather blowing ourselves up to say we were that powerful. Um, uh, in many respects, the, the, the root cause of the crisis is people not saying it's really, really, really bad when they should be saying it's really, really, really bad. Do you see what I mean? And trying to sort of gloss over it because, you know, it's the same pattern with the with the bailout of the banks, let alone bailout of big countries at large, you know. Um, otherwise, you just end up shoveling money into black holes. I mean, you know, I'm not an economist, but I, don't, I really don't buy that kind of thing. I think, um, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the you know, the, the biggest, the biggest problem the, you know, markets will tell you that the, the biggest, um, you know, the thing that markets hate most is uncertainty, um, and uh, you know that's and, and that's uncertainty not derived from what journalists are saying. You know, um, it's uncertainty derived from um, you know what journalists reporting what men in suits in Brussels are saying. Do you see what I mean? Um, uh, you know, and, and and even if you have certainty, even if it's bad certainty, at least it's certainty. Do you see what I mean? So that's another great question, and it's and it's pretty it's pretty shocking. Um, I mean, you know, I come from. Um, you want, we've seen Alex Crawford's uh, uh, kind of interview with the to the Edinburgh Festival um, uh, this year. When was it in August? I don't know, did you see that? Uh, so you know, Alex Crawford at Sky News was you know is, is, is like Sky's best you know, top class correspondent. You know, who's um, puts herself in the most incredible situations to report some incredible stories. Uh, whether that be the fall of, um, uh, you know, the fall of, of the Libyan regime, or, or uncovering, you know, um, uh, you know, Afghan sort of heroin smuggling across the border and stuff, um, she's got, you know, wife with four kids. Uh, she's, 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 she's a mother with four kids, um, and uh, you know, and uh, you know, her kids don't want her to, to to go away, and uh, you know, and the husband has to you know, play us, so I suppose, in many ways. Um, um, you know, she's she's almost like the kind of you know, a, you know the complete opposite of your average war correspondent. You see what I mean? Um, you also had uh, the um, uh, the correspondent from CBS who was um, who was you know, caught up in a fairly nasty situation um, uh, in Libya as well earlier in the in the in the spring. Um, yeah, I mean that's you know that's that's the reporting stuff that's dangerous. Uh, you know my view is that that's absolutely you know they they should be empowered to do that. My wife is a correspondent of the BBC. You know um, I don't want to go to a war zone either, but I don't think she'd want me to go to a war zone. I'm, there's no way I'm going to a war zone. I'll tell you that. Uh, but um, uh, so I, I, so I, I, I mean, I'm sort of gender blind when it comes to that part of it, the commissioning part. Uh, as far as Twitter's concerned. 
um, Twitter is a reflection of society, and uh, and 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 I think that's yeah. I mean, you could it'd be interesting to see what to your face. Um, it's a and it's quite polarized as well, and it's also that, p that people say weird things on Twitter they don't necessarily say out in the open. They think that they can get away with it as well, um, and you know we shouldn't when we you know. I suppose when we deal, when we involve, we work in social media um, and um, you know, and, and digital media. We, we know, we, Jeff Jarvis said this to us uh, actually about sort of two weeks ago. You, you, you know, there is of course the wisdom of the crowd, but there is also the idiocy of the crowd as well. You know, um, and um, and and you know, what do you do? I mean, you yes, you, you know, you can you you could you could step in, but. But um, I'm not quite sure how how football is protected by super injunctions. Is that what you're talking about? Well, before the, the piece is being reported constantly in the papers about with a thing of Birmingham, like the the racism against him. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the kind of implication that if you're well and male and football, you'll be protected or at least be a Sure. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's disgusting. I mean, you know, um, but I'm not sure. I think, and, and it's, it's kind of, you know, that, that's the sort of thing which needs exposing by journalism in and of itself. And it needs both journalists, but also kind of editors to stand up for their staff um, in, you know, in, in, to, to, to great respect. Um, uh, but but is regulation? I mean, is regulation the answer? I don't know because you know if you have if you regulate that, then you know you have you by, sort of by, you have to regulate everything else. I mean, I think we've just got to kind of understand that you know. Um, I mean, I call you know comments if you like have your say or whatever on articles and things like that. You know, my other name for it is the idiot magnet because as soon as you click that button in your publisher to allow people to have their say, you, you open yourself up to a whole load of that guff. You know. Um, but that's what's at society at large, and we shouldn't look at Twitter as saying, you know, it's a perfect utopian representation of society. It's not. There are just as many idiots in Twitter as there are the rest of the world, you know. Yeah, I think you're, you're, there's a really very valid point, and, and you know, um, you're absolutely right, and it does my nut. Um, you know, so when I was running the Sky News election, on, online last last summer, you know, you just you just get just vitriol. I mean, it's unbelievable. They think because you're a guy, you must be Rupert Murdoch's mouthpiece and all that kind of stuff, knowing absolutely nothing about the constitution of Sky, about the regulation in place to stop us from being like that. Uh, and all it is is exactly like the Serafinovitz uh, kind of um, bad, effectively bad journalism, just repeating hearsay. So, um, uh, so you're you're absolutely right. And and again, I suppose. Uh, it's, I suppose that does that come into the context potentially, you know, in Paul's three C's. Um, you have to understand what sort of, you know, what, what Twitter are like as a constituency. Do you see what I mean? So it's a bit like saying, you know, Amnesty International release a story saying that, um, uh, I don't know, um, uh, you know, uh, talking about uh, detention without trial. I mean, of course they've got, you know, they're Amnesty International, they're going to have a certain position around detention without trial or something like that, aren't they? You know, um, equally, I suppose it, you just have to kind of just retain in the back of your mind what, you know, what are Twitter like, what are the people on Twitter like, you know, that, that Twitter isn't exactly a... The place to come through for glowing positivity and um, and uh, um, you know um, uh, loads of loads of um, great compliments. I mean, you know, just check out uh, if, you know the ITV player, for example, or in the Rugby World Cup coverage. I mean, yes, the ITV player has its challenges, um, but in the Rugby World Cup coverage, for example, you know, it, you, you get ninety five percent of people on Twitter saying it was crap. Where actually it wasn't that quite, it wasn't quite that bad, but you know it, that's human nature as well. People are more likely to vent negatively than vent positively. Do you see what I mean? Uh, big challenge to make money out of news. Uh, no one likes advertising next to blood, guts, and gore. Um, and you know it's kind of it should be sort of fairly common knowledge that the, 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 the kind of the ITV policy, what we've got to do now in terms of our transformation and turning ourselves around as a as a, as a company, as an organisation, is. Um, uh, not placing so much reliance on the traditional 30-second TV ad spot in a uh, you know in a broadcast. 
let's not you know, beat around the bush though, it is a still a massive part of our revenue stream, but at the moment it's 75% of our revenues versus 25% and we need to get it more to sort of 50-50. So on, you know, the growth of the online space uh, needs to sort of shoulder, to, needs to create some new money basically, not, not just uh, you know, kind of reallocating advertising, spe existing advertising spend. So what, what I mean by that is, you know, a client, an advertiser, Coca-Cola, comes to ITV and says, oh, well, I've got this X amount of millions to spend on ITV this year, and they go, cool, you have this many advertising spots on the, on, on the telly, and you can have this much uh, on, on, on online. All that is doing is just carving it up the same money. We've got to go for new money. Do you see what I mean? We've got to say, right, you know, who we, you know, we need to, we need to increase that number. Um, and you're absolutely right. And the secret to that is via, is, is just by, by sort of the nature of digital media. We know we, you know, we can be, we can be more tailored. We can be more personal in our messaging. Um, you know, it, it's kind of, it's not quite a, you know, it's like a pact really, not quite a Faustian pact, but it's a pact nevertheless. You know, if you tell us a little bit more about yourself, we can improve the service to you. Uh, so, for example, I would much rather see, uh, you know, kind of adverts on my web experience about uh, bikes and uh, and drums, you know what I mean, rather than, you know, kind of, um, I don't know, um, uh, you know, um, ASOS or the fashion labels or whatever. Maybe there is a clue there for Christmas present buying, but, but I don't know. But, but do you see what I mean? You know, you need to, it makes, you know, you, you, people don't mind advertising, advertising which is relevant. They actually quite enjoy it, you know. Um, and also there's the whole thing about formats. I mean, you know, we, we've, we've got to move away from a space where it's okay to put a 30 second free roll which is after all the same asset used on the telly in front of the X Factor in front of a 45 second clip which is just daft I mean you know horrible 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 um, and there are much, much, much better ways of, of doing that and you know and um, and it's incumbent upon us as a kind of big organisation to try and break the new ground and try and influence that and we've got a real role to play in trying to define the market with some new formats. And if anyone wants to come and sponsor our new site, you're very welcome to.